Hello, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, depending on which part of the world you're joining us. Um, I do see some familiar faces today um, and some who are completely new. Um, but nevertheless, welcome to uh, another session about Active Reports. Today we're going to be talking about Active Reports 13 and what new features we've added and what benefits those bring. Um, this is Bupesh here, um, and I do have a full panel today. I have Mateen uh, with us, who is another product manager on Active Reports. Um, I have Evan, who is uh, our engagement engineer, and he's been probably talking to um, those to our folks here um, hey from guys. a support side. And we also have Ethan, um, who takes uh, care of our pre-sales uh, work. Uh, and he's our technical account manager, and he probably has interacted with many of you guys already as well. Um, hey, so everyone. say hi, guys, before we start. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay, so today what we're going to do um, is we're going to look at uh, uh, a few things about uh, the new um, stuff that we've added with Active Reports 13. Now, we've added quite a bit, so um, the bigger things that we've added are the web designer. Um, the web designer is, is a end user designer that you can embed obviously in your web applications. Um, and we're going to be seeing how that works. We're going to be seeing how to use the web designer along with focus on specifically the formatted text control and the new charts. Um, and then we're going to end up with the, the JS viewer, um, which is uh, an enhancement from the HTML5 viewer that we had in earlier versions. Um, and then at the end, obviously, we'll have Q&A. Now, before we get started with this whole um, session, um, just a, a few questions that we always get asked. Uh, I think uh, it be, it's good to kind of get uh, these answers done and um, over with so that we can move on and focus on the new features. So let me, let me go around the panel and uh, let's just ask these questions. How do I download Active Reports 13? Mateen. So Active Reports 13, uh, you can actually download by going straight to the um, Active Reports website. Um, there's a big button that says download. Uh, click that, it'll take you to the download page. Wonderful. Um, and can I install Active Reports 13 and previous versions side by side? Evan, what do you think? So yeah, you can, uh, you can install previous versions of Active Reports along with AR13. You can install versions like AR12, uh, 11, 10, and even versions like AR6. Yeah, I kind of gave that answer away, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> okay, how about the next one? Yeah. How do I upgrade my existing reports to Active Reports 13? Good question. So, that, so that's very simple. All you have to do is, um, once you install Active Reports 13, it comes with a tool in Visual Studio called Convert to Active Reports 13. And what that tool will do is basically search your um, search your projects or your application and see if there's any instances of active reports in it and it will convert it to the newest version of active reports. Wonderful. And uh, um, Ethan, can I get a free copy? Uh, it depends. So if you have an active maintenance subscription for active reports 12, then you are eligible for a free copy of active reports 13. Uh, otherwise, we do offer upgrade licenses if you're on an older version of Active Reports, you know, like Active Reports 10 or 11. Um, and then also, if you're brand new to Active Reports and don't have any existing licenses, you know, we can help you out with that too. Wonderful, thanks, uh, thanks, guys. So now, now that we've answered a few of your basic questions, let's uh, let's look at some of our some of ours. Where are you guys on your whole web application journey? Are you currently working on web applications uh, and the web uh, uh, frameworks? Or, or are you looking to migrate? Or are you strictly desktop? Uh, let's, let's get a poll going here. Um, and I do have only two. So um, we'll limit to those two before we uh, get on to uh, the actual um, features. Um, and we'll do this quickly so that we don't have to spend too much time here. So as soon as we get like around half of our um, audience uh, voting, um, we will go ahead and close the poll. There's just a few more seconds here.
Okay, wonderful. So um, I see most of us are already on the web application side um, or are going to be moving forward to uh, the web application in the next six months or so. Uh, some of us are strictly desktop, which is perfectly fine. We do see that as well. Um, and with those um, uh, guys, we usually uh, see a lot of the features still being used. Um, now, in terms of the frameworks, what are, what are the frameworks that we um, look at or are using at the moment? Um, is it .NET Core, um, ASP.NET, MVC for web application, Angular, HTML5, JS, or all just the pure desktop stuff? Okay, we'll give our uh, audience a few more seconds here. I see an, a more even distribution um, in this as the votes come in. So here we go. Let's close out the poll and share the results here. So we see that uh, um, we have pretty much an even distribution along the top two um, web platforms. And then like we saw a few of our um, audience uh, guys in the Windows only uh, area, they're also um, represented here by 45%. Wow. Um, okay, so um, for for everyone really, the features that we're going to be talking about um, with the designer and how to use it, they're going to be common. Um, but in terms of the first step, let's look at uh, the for the web uh, application guys, how to embed an end user designer with using the new web designer. Um, so um, over to Mateen. Mateen, you want to take this one, please? All right. Thanks, Bupesh. Uh, yes. So the web designer, as Bupesh mentioned um, earlier, uh, Active Reports comes with um, various web with various different designers. So we have the uh, desktop end user designer uh, that has been available forever with Active Reports. Um, we also have the Visual Studio integrated designer. Um, and uh, both of uh, both of those designers are still available. They're still in use. All of the features that we'll be showing today will still be available in all in those designers as well as the web designer. Uh, but since the web designer is a new uh, feature in Active Reports 13, we wanted to sort of focus in on that um, and show um, how we can embed the web designer in your uh, web application. Um, and then uh, how you can customize it because the designer is built off of uh, JavaScript. Um, so it does support, you know, your major browsers. Um, and because it is a JavaScript designer, basically, um, it is also customizable. So you can customize the themes and the, and the styling uh, for your corporate needs. So if you have a corporate branding that you need to maintain uh, within your application, uh, you can certainly uh, bring that theme in and apply it to the web designer. You can, you know, imaging and, and logos and all of these uh, will be available. Uh, you can customize a designer to give certain functionality available to a certain group or, you know, vice versa, or just not make certain uh, uh, functionalities in the designer available to anyone. And we'll sort of go through that process today um, in our demo. Um, so this customizable feature is a big feature of, of the designer, and this is what I wanted to show, and this is part of the um, uh, features that, that we were going, going to be going over. Um, and in order to make this customization easy for you, we've provided some plugins. Uh, so for example, we have a file menu plugin um, that we'll be looking at, a preview plugin, um, a save and a save as button, um, and a data set picker. And the last one, this data set picker, is basically, you know, in cases where you don't want your end users to manipulate the data set or create a new data set um, out of the data sources that are available. Um, so these are the, the features that we'll be going over. So let's take a look at how we can uh, implement uh, a web designer uh, into your application. So what I'm going to show first, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what I'm going to show first, and let me go ahead and... Let's yeah, let's make you the presenter, Mateen, yes. just so that you can show the stuff. I'm going to go you know, ahead. You need to be that. <laughs> yep. Okay. And so, while, while we get, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, great, you're ready, okay. I was just going to say that while we while we wait for you to get ready, um, I do want to mention um, we do have the questions panel um, on our control panel. Um, so if you have questions, go ahead and start entering them in, and uh, we'll start answering those 
as they come in and we can ask them uh, um, and uh, answer them um, during the session as well or at the very end. So go ahead uh, and uh, start asking questions while Mateen goes through um, this demo. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thanks, Bupesh, for that reminder for the uh, questions panel. Um, okay, so what I'm showing here, what you guys are seeing here is basically a bare bones designer um, uh, for the, the, the web designer embedded in a, in a simple ASP.NET Core application. Um, so you can see it's just basically a designer. There's no preview buttons. There's no ability to, for example, create a new data set. Um, that's basically it. Uh, there's really no functionality. A user can basically just create a report or, uh, you know, you can um, have the designer open up with an existing report so the user can manipulate the layout of that report. Um, and then that's basically it. Um, so we're going to add on to this uh, bare bones and give some functionality uh, to the designer. In some instances, uh, we'll explain how that functionality helps out. So let's take a look at um, how this is done. Um, so what I have here is my instance of Visual Studio 2019 open. Um, and in here, I have a basic ASP.NET Core application. Um, and, in, and if we go through, uh, if we go through the uh, Solution Explorer, just taking a look quickly at what we have, we have a roots folder that has all of my JS files and my CSS files. Uh, we have a resource, a controllers folder, which basically is for the designer and for the preview um, and the similar views that I have here. Um, so we're mainly going to be using and manipulating the design view. Um, and I also have a resources folder. And then in, in this resources folder, I mainly have some themes that we'll be uh, exploring and a, a couple of um, uh, reports that are pre-made. Um, that will be showing up in the uh, viewer. <clears throat> so uh, as far as this uh, view, the design view that I have open here, uh, you can see it's just basic a, a basic design view. It's, it's a basic view. Um, and I'm referencing all of my CSS and JS files uh, and just some variables that I'm instantiating here. Uh, and then here is where I am basically bringing in the web designer. So these uh, four lines, these four lines uh, are uh, basically what's uh, being used to bring in the web designer into uh, our application. Uh, so that's all that's really needed. Uh, and if you uh, later on, we'll be talking about the JS viewer and this, the process is the same. So just, you know, be just to be a few lines that you would need to um, implement the JS viewer in your application as well. And then I have some extra code down here that will be used in the uh, functionalities that we're adding into the viewer. Um, so if you remember, we had a very bare bones viewer uh, and what we're going to do is add some functionality to that viewer. So what I'm going to do is, for example, um, give the uh, user the ability to save. Okay, so we're going to add a save button. Um, so the viewer has a, um, the designer rather, has a uh, designer options uh, that we can use uh, to customize our uh, designer. So let's add a save button and make it visible and we're going to call and give it the functionality right so um, so what's going to happen when they click save so i have this on save method um, in the bottom of my code index for functionality here uh, so that's one thing that we're going to do and in order just just to sort of you know for the sake of time uh, i'm just going to copy and paste some code um, basically to bring in um, the save as button as well as a file menu. So let's take a look at this once I go ahead and run this. So while this is taking some time to run and build, uh, we can answer some questions actually. So yeah, we do have a couple of questions, Mateen. That's a good point. Um, so what are the versions of uh, Visual Studio that are supported? Mike was asking. So the versions of Visual Studio that are supported is from uh, Visual Studio 2012 and up in Active Reports 13. Wonderful. And uh, uh, another question from Lynn was that uh, um, reports created with the web designer are compatible with reports created 
um, in the Windows Designer. And uh, I guess uh, um, while we wait for this to uh, compile and show, um, I think we did answer it online, but uh, it is RDL and page reports. They can be edited and modified with the Web Designer. Um, but all reports uh, created in either the either of the designers that Mateen mentioned um, are uh, viewable by any of the active reports um, viewers. Now, um, the web designer can only modify uh, and preview RDL and page reports. Um, I guess your thing is compiled now, Mateen. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have the updated designer now open. Uh, so as you can see, we have a save, a save as, and a file menu. Um, so if you remember in the Visual Studio application, we had some um, reports uh, that were pre-made. So all of those reports, those three reports show up in the file menu. Uh, so we have the different options within the file menu here. Uh, if we wanted to open, uh, save the existing report, which is blank right now, um, or we can just open uh, one of our existing um, uh, RDL uh, reports uh, in the designer. So once you see uh, in, in this particular designer, since there's no preview, the user can only modify the report. If they modify something, uh, then they can go ahead and save or save as. Maybe you don't want them to overwrite the existing version of the report and just, you know, say, you know, table version one or something like this. Uh, make uh, have them save it save as as, a, as opposed to saving um, so one of the other functionalities that uh, we want to give the user is maybe um, you know right now they don't have the ability to create their own data set maybe you want them to be able to create a data set uh, from the particular data source um, so that's maybe the functionality that we want to add uh, next to the viewer so very quickly we're going to add a couple of other functionalities one thing we want to be able to allow them to preview the report so once they make additions to the report uh you know maybe they want to see just uh, just to make sure they have a WYSIWYG report uh, maybe they want to uh preview the report to see exactly how it looks um and then uh, also we're going to add that data set picker so these two pieces of code that i've just pasted for preview and the data set picker and let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this and show the functionalities of these two um features um so again it's and while again we wait yeah while we wait um there is an interesting question um from cameron this time does uh after reports work with the, the mac version of visual studio um that's an interesting question mateen what do you think honestly uh, I, I i i i haven't tried this um uh, you have a mac have you tried this with I, I haven't actually. You're right. Um, the thing with the uh, the Mac version is you can prob uh, probably embed, do the embedding and everything because it is uh, just working off of the assemblies and uh, it's basically web code and JS. Um, but in terms of actually designing and integrating Active Reports itself, it does need uh, um, the Windows uh, OS and the extensions that plug into the Windows version of Visual Studio. Uh, the Mac version is still kind of uh, different um, when it comes to the Visual Studio. Um, so I wouldn't expect us uh, to be able to design or open up the Active Reports designer within the Mac version of Visual Studio, but we should be able to uh, embed um, this, the uh, do what you're doing with the code right now, Mateen, within yes. the Visual Studio for Mac. Yes, I agree. I, I, I suppose it would be possible to uh, embed this viewer, uh, rather this um, designer, uh, web designer, uh, in an application on a Mac. Uh, and same thing with the JS viewer. Uh, that, that should be possible as well. Okay, so the uh, application just launched. Um, so one thing that I want to show real quick as I'm running out of time is uh, data sets. So now we can create, the user can create their own data sets. Um, and uh, the other thing we have added is the preview button. So let's show that real quickly. So again, let's bring in that table uh, report and let's go ahead and preview uh, this report. Uh, and the preview that will open up will actually be using that JS viewer that we'll be talking about later on in this webinar. Um, so that is part of uh, the web designer as well.
Okay, so as you can see, the report renders uh, within the JS viewer. Um, you can uh, view the report, preview it, make sure that it looks good, and then uh, pass it on to um, whoever or just save it to your application. And we'll talk about the, the, the other functionalities are actually using the designer further um, in the next section. So that is it for my portion. Wonderful. So I'm going to take back control here, come back to our presentation. Um, and let's go ahead and move on. Right, so um, the new web designer. Now we saw a sneak peek of it, um, but uh, what I'm going to be talking about um, is how to get around uh, the web designer, what, to, what you can do, where the things are that you're used to, the toolbox, the properties, the data shelf. You kind of saw all of these um, in, in some way or form um, when Mateen was kind of embedding it. Um, but we'll go into a bit more detail and talk about some features of each of these. Um, we'll, we'll look at dragging and dropping controls, uh, look at where the data sets, filters, and parameters are, um, look at how we do styling and themes and how you can actually use those um, to make it easier for end users to kind of style and theme their reports. And all in all, we're looking at the whole picture of the end user reporting and how that web designer can help you provide that end user reporting to um, your users through your web application. Now, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot of functionality. And we do have the user guide that you can uh, refer to with more details about each of these and much more along with how to uh, steps and articles about how to do some basic stuff with the web designer. Uh, one of the questions that I saw was how to create a um, cross-tab report. And the guide, the user, the user guide would definitely have steps for that. We're not going to go uh, into that too much in the demo um, because it is, uh, it will have steps and data sets and everything. Um, but you can definitely um, look at the user guide. Um, now, let me go ahead and change my screen here. Okay. So, this is my designer, which I have uh, uh, kind of embedded. It's basically the same sample that uh, Mateen was working on, uh, just deployed on our Azure uh, box. And uh, um, first off, we see on the left-hand side, um, this is our toolbox. Um, we have our Explorer on the top. This gives us all the um, components or controls that we have on the page. And we'll look at this again maybe later. Uh, and I know Evan is going to do a lot more stuff on the Explorer side when he goes through the charts. Um, so we'll we'll leave the, this at that point. Uh, the Group Explorer, for people who have used uh, tablets, this is where the Group Explorer will be for the rows and um, columns. And this is um, for that question uh, about the cross tab. This is where you would be configuring a lot of those uh, settings. The other toolbar, toolboxes, uh, the tools in the toolbox, like basic checkbox, text box, table, and all, um, there they reside here as well. On the top, we have our menu, uh, our file menu, uh, reports, and then based on what, what you have, the table or chart, you'll we'll get more menu options on the top, uh, plus our standard formatting menu uh, for quick format uh, actions. On the right-hand side, you'll see the properties. Now, there's a lot more properties here, uh, and all of them are represented. But in a, there's two views to the properties. One is our basic view, which is what we see here, and then there's an advanced view. The advanced view gives us everything that we're used to with the Windows designer, with the Visual Studio designer. Um, all the control of all the granular uh, settings that are available for all the con um, the report controls that we drop. For example, we'll see if I drop a table control, which I will use uh, later. So let me go ahead and add that in here. Um, you'll you'll see I have a lot more control here with the data set, the detail element, and everything. But not all uh, users use that. Mostly end users and business users they will. Uh, use a certain set of properties and they'll use those often. So we have this bit, the basic mode, which basically gives, uh, allows the user to focus in on the more commonly used uh, elements. 
or property settings for uh, the table. Now, one of the things, um, if you are an existing user of uh, Active Reports and you've used uh, Active Reports in the past, you would have noticed immediately is that this is a page report. Um, a page report is different than an RDL report uh, in the way that the page report is driven by the layout. So the amount of data that you see on a page is dependent on the layout that you define on the page. So the layout doesn't move. And that's particularly important for um, billing statements or um, catalogs or magazine designs, um, certificates, and a whole lot of other things where the layout is important and the data can be overflown into other pages uh, if needed, but as long as the first page or the uh, page design doesn't change. So that's what um, this uh, page report is all about. And because I'm making a letter, that's what I have um, started to use. So we'll start and expand this area of my table. And this gray area is where my table resides. This is how much space my table will grow to and will not grow further away from this. Um, and we'll come to growing the table in just a second here and adding content to it. Um, the next shelf that I wanted to show you and talk to you about is the data shelf. And this is something that uh, we saw with Mateen's uh, um, session where he talked about adding, uh, allowing, adding the data set and remove or uh, preventing that add and everything. But essentially what you get is a list of fields. So you can control what fields the user sees or what data the user sees and you can fix that or you can give uh, the user freedom. So you basically have control over what you want your user to be able to do while he works with the reports. So in this case, this is movies data, movie sales data. So I'm just gonna drag on, drop my title here. Don't need my count, right? And make this longer. Now that's one way of uh, dragging data um, and dropping it on um, a report control whether it be a text box, a table, cell, um, whether it be a chart or whatnot, right? Um, but the other way is to use this, this square with ellipses, right? And I find this much easier, you know? You can just go in, scroll, hit the quantity. Go in, scroll, say price, right? But you also have right-click capabilities. So let's go ahead and delete these. Now, I need to add a total a total price, right? So quantity multiplied by price. I don't have that as a, um, a ready field in my data set. So I can go in here and hit the plus sign and I'll add a, a column to my right, or I can right click and add a column to my right or left. Uh, and I can add multiple columns as well. I just need the one. So I'll go ahead and just do one right column and there it is right here. Now here, I don't want to use the ellipsis because it's not a predefined um, data field. I want to go ahead and use an expression. So, and the expression that I'll do is simply price uh, quantity multiplied by price. And that will give me my total. Quantity and multiplication by price. Simple enough formula, right? And we'll get to some complex formulas in a while. Uh, and we'll call this total, right? So next, the thing that I want to do is format these, right? Because these are just plain numbers, right? We haven't done any formatting yet. So let's go back to our uh, properties for this. So the price, we're going to format that as currency. Um, and the quantity, we're going to format that as currency as well, right? The, or no, quantities should not be a currency. That should be a decimal. Now, the decimal, I don't want uh, uh, leading zeros, so I'm going to take that out and say zero leading zeros, just give me the uh, number, and the, uh, the total is going to be a currency, right? So simple as that. I could enter my notation here directly if I knew that, um, or even customize my um, format um, to whatever I really need to format it as. Let me go ahead and expand this a bit more so it fits into this gray area space that we've added, and we're good to go. Now, the other thing that I want to do is kind of uh, um, style this, right? So let me go ahead and first go to my report and say, let me choose a theme. Right now, I don't have any theme attached. 
Uh, this is a list of themes that are already embedded within um, the current um, project for uh, the web application um, and thus also available for my uh, report designer. I can add to this. I could add my own corporate uh, um, um, content um, or theme, uh, which essentially is kind of uh, going to drive my corporate colors across all my reports and stuff. Um, or I could just say, choose one of the existing ones. Um, and I chose one of the existing ones. And what that does is helps me with styling all my controls. Um, so we, uh, for all the controls, we have a style um, drop down. Again, these are styles that I can define. Um, I can change um, and define. So as you see, um, as I change the style, my um, uh, colors, in this case, colors are changing in some of the fonts as well. Um, and we see that's accent two. Accent three is the one that I like. I like the color green here. Um, and then if I go ahead and change my uh, theme, um, and change it to something else. The style also changes to reflect the colors of that theme. So I can make sure my themes are consistent across uh, my reports uh, and my styles will automatically drive and inherit from the theme. Um, it helps with kind of keeping that look of the report consistent throughout what the users uh, create, right? And kind of gives them a sense of control um, from a corporate branding perspective. Now let's go ahead and see this. Um, let's go ahead and do a quick preview of uh, this report. It should give us a two-page report um, with all the data, right? Um, it basically gives us a dump of all the titles, all the orders um, that we have in the system or in the data set. Now, I don't want, um, I want to break this up based on the um, customer. Right? I'm making a letter at the end of the day, right? So um, one beauty with page reports is that you can go ahead and uh, um, define the, uh, the group on which you want to filter or uh, change the page, so to say. So I can define just by adding a group expression here and saying um, that, um, change a page or break the data into pages based on the customer ID, that's all I need to do to basically add a group by and a break uh, after section, which if you've been using the um, section reports ever, um, is um, a tedious job uh, when it comes to defining the group, adding um, the page, keeping grouped together and all those things. This is as simple as, hey, just add a group expression at the page level, right? And to see that, um, we'll go ahead and add uh, an expression here, right? Um, we'll just do first name, but it's gonna give us count of first name. We don't want that. Because it is a group field, um, it will want to give us a count by default. Um, and we'll just use the first of the first name, right? Just to see how this grouping looks like. And let's have, have a quick look at this again. And this should give us six pages and a subset of the report or of the data for each of our customer, right? So you will see the first name changing um, while the data changes, right? Now, just having the first name up there, that doesn't really help, right? So we need some something else, something more rich in terms of text as part of um, a report or of a letter, right? So we are gonna use a formatted text box here. All right, so we'll add the space, right? Um, expand it to cover how much space we wanted to cover, right? And the thing with the formatted text box for people who haven't used formatted text before is that it gives you the ability to do formatting and actually add rich text um, within one um, text box container um, and rather than having multiple text boxes work with layouts and all that sort of stuff um, and uh, disparate 
um, settings for formats and bold and styles and whatnot. You can do all that within one HTML uh, content. Now, and you can do a lot of mail merge type activities. So let's let's first go ahead and create my mail merge fields, um, which I have here. Um, I have a cheat sheet here for um, the formulas to save us time. Um, and we're gonna make uh, five fields here, right? And we'll go ahead and enter those in. Um, customer name, right? And we'll have the address. We'll have the city, state, postcode. Okay, we'll have the country. Okay, and we will have the first name uh, for the um, for the starting of the letter. Right. So these two are just single um, values, so we can just drop down and say first name, um, drop down and say country. Right. The others are expressions. So we'll go ahead and open the expression. For, for example, city state postcode, we will use the um, city state and postcode as a concatenated string, right? So it's basically just from the data sets, just like I did with the uh, pricing stuff, just concatenated um, a string with that, right? The address as well, we will go ahead and add that as an expression and the address uh, concatenates the address one field and the address two field. So we have that there. And now um, the last one, the customer name, we will, um, this is gonna be longer. Um, it has the first name, last name um, concatenated along with the account number in brackets. So we have that out there, save that. And the HTML. Now, this 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 is a big part. This is what brings everything together in um, the um, formatted text. And I have a pre-prepared HTML because it's a longer one. Um, and typing this out would just take forever for me um, in the session. So what we have here, a div, we have a div with specific inline style, right? So ten size font, bold and it's right aligned. And in that uh, div, I'm basically taking my customer name field, my address uh, field, my city state postcode, and my country. So basically putting an address um, on the top right. Uh, and then I have my main paragraph um, with a div with specific font uh, style um, and starting with dear, first name, blah, 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 and telling him not to call me. Uh, sincerely, the movie club. Um, and press save. So what we see here is we actually see those styles on here um, as part of the format itself. So as you can see, my fonts have changed. Um, the strong uh, element over here with the do not call is right here. And my um, address and first name and everything is right aligned up on the top. All right. So let's go ahead and move this up a bit because as we can see, it's more space there. There we go. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Right, so there we go. So we have the um, stuff filled in. We have the first name, last name, address. We have the letter and we have essentially done mail merge um, with data um, from a detail uh, data set, right? So that's just one way of uh, using uh, um, the designer and we'll go and look at more charting based uh, um, stuff in our next session. Now, before we move on to the next session, I, we can go ahead and save this. Um, and I'm just gonna overwrite what I already have and save that. And what that does is basically save it to my data and now I can go ahead and share it or we can, it can be become part of my um, uh, resources that my web application can use as needed uh, for viewing or whatnot, right? 
So moving back to the presentation here now, um, and charts. Um, Evan, you want to take us through charts, please? Yeah, sure, Bukash. Uh, thanks for demoing uh, the web designer and formatted text. So for charts, we're going to cover a couple things um, before we demo it. So one thing we're going to talk about is the overview of the chart control. And then we're going to talk about some of the new features of the enhanced charts. And then we're going to talk about the chart types um, that can be used within the web designer. And then we'll uh, demo how to create a chart. So if we look at the overview, the chart data control shows your data in a graphical representation that often makes it easier for users to comprehend large amounts of data quickly. The chart uses familiar elements such as axis labels, titles, and even legends to help visualize and interpret data. So if you look in this column chart, you can see some elements like the trend of the gross profit, which is the green line, and the number of items sold in the store's location, which are uh, the orange columns in the chart. Now let's take a look at the encodings. So encodings convert the data into visual elements. This defines how each field from a data set is visualized. There are three main elements used when creating charts. The first element is the data field, which contains values that determine what fields should be plotted along the y-axis. The second element is the encoding field, which handles the detail mapping, color mapping, shape mapping, and size mapping. The last element is the category field, which is used to, used to group the data set into multiple categories for each unique value that exists in that field. So as you can see, store name is broken up into, into four different names on the x-axis, store A, B, C, and D. We'll see this later on when we create a chart in the web designer. So let's take a look at the new features. So one of the new features of the chart is the ability to enhance the interactivity in your report. And you can do this by adding drill through links to your chart so that you can link to another report or another report item in your report. Another notable feature is the improved performance for the charts. So elements of the charts will update during design time so the user will, will get to see their changes made on the chart. I find this feature to be very uh, useful when building charts because I like to be able to see um, the changes I've made to the chart instead of um, flipping back from design time to run time just to see my changes. And the last feature is the new chart types, which is added to the control. So there's, so there's a bunch of chart types that you've probably been familiar with, like column, bar, line, area, pie, pyramid and funnel. Those are like some common ones that I've been exposed to, but we've added some new ones like the bubble, scatter, mat, candlestick, high, low, close, and high, low, open, close. So now that we got some background information about charts, let's take a look at, at how to create a simple chart. Yeah. All right, there we go. All right, so what we're going to be doing in this in the demo is kind of um, briefly touch upon the report explorer, like Gupesh mentioned in his demo, and then talk about how to create a chart. So the report explorer, you can open it right here on the side, and what it does is it shows you kind of the breakdown of the report itself. So within the body, so the main content of the report, I added the, car, the chart control. And within the chart, there's a header section, the plot area, which contains the data, the legend, and then the plot itself, the global legend, and the footer. So, so if you want to customize the report, say like you want to customize the x-axis, you would go over to the report explorer and access its properties to, to change however you see fit. So another, another cool feature about this is you can interact with the chart too to kind of um, access the properties as well if you're, if you're used to that instead of using the Report Explorer. I personally prefer to use the Report Explorer just because 
yeah. I just like to see what I'm changing. So now, but now that we've seen how the, how the report explorer works, let's let's create a chart. So I'm going to delete this. What we're going to do is going to drag a chart to the report. Make it a little bigger. And we're going to head over to the chart tab up top. We're, we're going to set the template. So one thing to note is when you drag a chart over, this chart tab is, is added next to the file home and report um, that the team mentioned during the embedding. So once, once that's added, you have two options called set plot template and set chart template. So we're going to set the plot template, which we're going to change the type of chart. We're going to change it to bar. And then for chart template, for chart palette, I mean, we're going to change it to some colors. So we'll do the smooth colors. All right. So now that we got some of the customization done, we're going to, going to add some data to it. So let's add some data fields. So I'm going to drag units and stock over. And then I'm going to drag unit price over. And then we're going to categorize these two data fields by using the category name field. So now, if we preview this, we'll see the different types of categories along with, along with the units in stock and the products. So some other things that we can customize with this. So if we click, so if we click the, the plot itself or click plot, plot one, we can go to the encodings and show the values in the legend so that we can see what um, what each data what each series of data is. So I'm gonna move this up to the top of the report. And what I did there is I just went to the legend and then shift the position of the legend to the top. So now if we preview it, so now we get a better understanding of what what the data is the data is shown. So another thing that you can do is um, we'll take a look at another type of chart, which most of you are familiar with, are a column chart. The column chart will kind of do the same thing right here. Ah, so in this case, it's not showing all the, all the categories, which is a common case. Um, that I've experienced with customers. And a quick way to fix that is to click, to select your x-axis, which is your categories in this column chart. And you wanna go down and shift the label angle to say like 45 degrees. So it's just at an angle. So if we preview it now, you'll now see that all the, all the categories show up. So just for my, my example, <laughs> Uh, the categories were, some of them were hidden because uh, the categories were just taking too much space in the y-axis. I mean, on the x-axis, I'm sorry. And then one other template I'll show you is um, a line chart, which is similar. As you can see, it shows, it shows the units in stock and unit price for each category in the chart. So that's just a quick, easy way how to create a chart in the web designer. Um, there's, there's another cool feature that I want to touch on, and that's how to drill through reports using a chart. So how this is done is if you select the chart, the plot area, so plot one, and you head over to the action type property. So this property has three options. It has the option to jump to a report. So Basically what that means is you can drill, you can use this report to drill through to another report that has data within it. And then the jump the bookmark uh, property, what that does, it gives you the option to jump to a different item on your report itself. So say on this page, I have a chart and I wanna access um, maybe page two or three that has a table or an image. You can jump to bookmark and, and then ID that that image or table so that the chart will then link to that table once the user selects it. And then the last option is jump to URL, which basically, um, once you click the chart, you can 
jump to a site like Amazon or Google or GrapeCity.com um, once the report's rendered. So we're going to do jump to report, and then we're going to select another report called chart RDLX. So now if we run it, and we interact with the, the report, it's going to jump us to a whole completely new report. And this report contains another chart that also sorts about categories and, and shows what's available and discontinued. So that's, so that's kind of some of the new features of the new enhanced charts in the web designer. Um, now I'm gonna hit it off to Ethan, who's gonna be talking a little bit more about the JS viewer. Thanks, Evan. Um, yeah, so we're running a little bit short on time here, so I'll kind of take you through a brief walkthrough of uh, the features of the JavaScript viewer. So first, um, what we're going to talk about is, uh, you know, what is the JavaScript viewer? So this is something that's new with Active Reports 13. It's something that uh, we're all really excited about. Um, so, you know, what it is is a JavaScript component that can be very easily customized for use in web applications to preview all types of reports. So page reports, RDL reports, section reports. Um, and, and in terms of embedding it, you know, it can be embedded similarly to how we saw the designer embedded uh, with Mateen uh, walking us through that earlier. It'll work on modern web app frameworks such as ASP.NET MVC, ASP.NET Core MVC, HTML5, and then of course major JavaScript fr frameworks um, such as Angular, Vue, React, um, and then, uh, you know, kind of my favorite feature of the JavaScript viewer is the responsive visualization. Uh, and what that basically is, is it allows for the JavaScript viewer to automatically adjust to the screen size so that you can use it on all desktop, mobile, and touch devices on modern browsers. So the report itself is going to stay the same, but the viewer is going to automatically adjust to the screen of, of however it's being consumed. Um, so what we're going to cover in the JavaScript viewer is page navigation, refreshing the report, how to download the report, printing, uh, different display views, zooming in on the report, and then the parameters UI. So we'll go ahead and get started here. I'm going to share my screen. All right. So what we have open here is the ASP.NET Core MVC sample, and this is installed with Active Reports 13. Uh, we have a couple other samples using the JS Viewer. I'd recommend you check them out if you haven't already done so. Um, so the report we're looking at here, uh, you know, just a, a stack performance report. The parameter UI is going to be on the right-hand side here. So uh, end users for this report, you know, they're going to choose a year and then the company and hit preview. That's going to display this report. Um, above this parameters UI is the zooming functionality. So, you know, we can zoom in on here, uh, zoom out, you know, it's, it's helpful for large reports um, such as this, this one that's going to load here in a second. While we're waiting for this one to load, um, these buttons at the top, you know, what do these do? So first, um, page navigation. So by default, I can navigate through this report by clicking through the individual pages. For a long report, that's not gonna be the most efficient way to do that. So I can change the display mode to continuous view. And that's gonna allow me to scroll through the report like such. Um, now I can also just jump to the last page, jump to the first page, or um, I can also switch it to galley mode. So galley mode, what this is gonna do is basically stack all the pages on top of each other. So it's going to get rid of the automatic page breaks. It's going to get rid of the margins on the report. And then, um, you know, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see here, it's all just one page. And this is great for, um, you know, mobile consumption of these reports. So if I'm looking at this on a smartphone, I don't want to have multiple pages of this report. I want it all on one single page. And then um, refresh. So this is going to refresh the data, stay up to date with the um, data in the report. I can print this report right from here. And finally, I can download this report as, as a plethora of formats here available to us. We can also change these, um, you know, and, and limit end users to what formats they actually have access to. Um, so I don't want to take up any more time. I want to leave some time for questions. Um, so with that being said, we'll jump back to Bupesh and we'll, uh, we'll close things out here, all right? Right, thank you. So we'll jump back to me as presenting. A lot of jumping around that we're doing, huh? 
Um, oh, yeah. So to wrap up what we saw today, um, we saw the embedding of the web designer, how to kind of go through, use the APIs, use the plugins to embed the web designer for your end users within your own web application, how to theme it, how to um, change the colors and everything. Um, and we saw how to use the web designer in uh, some basic forms um, using mail merge, um, using the formatted text, using the uh, page reports and filtering, um, using the charts, and then at the end, kind of like um, seeing all that happen within the preview, right, um, within the JS viewer. Now, before we go on to kind of uh, answer questions, there are a couple of uh, questions here um, that uh, are open. Um, we do have a short uh, post session survey. So if you could uh, go ahead and answer those questions, there's like four or five questions, but they're very important to us because it gives us feedback. It uh, tells us if this content was relevant or what we can do to make it better for you guys um, with future webinars. Um, so go ahead and please fill that in. And we have a few links here for um, quick links to trial, starting the download. Uh, starting the trial, contacting support, contacting sales, or just just generally stay in touch with the, what's latest and greatest with the active reports as uh, we release future versions and um, release more information in blog articles and stuff. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and answer some questions. So um, guys, one of the um, questions that came up is, if I have already upgraded to Active Reports 13 with, and I only have Visual Studio 2017 installed at that time, but then I installed Visual Studio 2019, how do, do I need to uninstall and then reinstall Active Reports 13? Or um, is there a shorter way? What do you guys think about this question? I have a question. So um, I, I think for, for this one, um, so, so AR13 came out before uh, uh, Visual Studio uh, 2019. So it's so version 13.0 isn't supported at the moment. But what I believe is uh, going to be happening, and the team you can confirm this as well. Um, AR13.1 will be um, will have support for Visual Studio 2019. So um, so when that yeah, gets released right. late. Okay. You're right. Um, so, yeah. We will we will get uh, support with that. Uh, and in the in this case, uh, generally, what I've seen also um, is that if you do have if you install any new version of Visual Studio, um, it may not pick up the um, environment and extensions available with earlier versions. So there, um, Visual Studio offers a, a nifty tool there uh, called DevN. Um, which um, basically goes out and searches for extensions and templates um, and in, uh, which are relevant to the Visual Studio um, environment uh, and updates them. So that's something, that's a tool that you can run um, to uh, kind of update your Visual Studio to 2019 after it has installed with um, Active Reports 13 or other tools that you have uh, for Visual Studio. Um, and that has worked in the past um, pretty much. Um, now, there is another question here, um, and I guess uh, um, this one's also um, open. What considerations that one needs to pay attention to so that a report data set is based on parameterized SQL Server stored procedures? So I'm guessing what uh, uh, Mike's asking here is, um, what things do we need to keep in mind um, when using stored procedures and parameterized stored procedures as such when using them with report data sets? So what are your thoughts, guys, on this? I guess everybody's um, so, muted out. Um, yeah, there you go, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> so one, uh, one thing that comes to mind when working with parameter, parameterized um, store procedures in SQL is that you want to make sure that the, um, the store procedure like executes and runs um, before you um, configure it to your report. 
because um, we active reports uh, isn't able to kind of like kind of like debug your store procedure. So we want to make sure that you have the ability to to execute and run it before you configure it to the report itself. That's a good point. Test your store procedure before you actually configure it with the report, um, because any um, errors in the stored procedures are not going to be reported up uh, to uh, the report data set. Um, any, anything else? What, el what other considerations um, uh, should one take? Um, I can think of one. Um, the fact that the stored procedure may be a heavy piece of code. So make sure that when you're sending the parameter in, uh, it is sufficient. And uh, if it's something that keeps on changing parameters, uh, maybe um, send the superset to the report and use report filters um, uh, rather than uh, um, all doing the filtering on the data set uh, on the database side. So that's also another consideration, but it will slow down maybe uh, or actually need more resources on your report uh, reporting side uh, and the app server um, for your for your web application, but it will free up some of the time uh, from your database. So that's a uh, that's a balance that you'll have to figure out to reach. Um, anything else? What are, what are what other considerations before we move on to the next question? And we only have time for one more. So, so Lukash, I have one, have one more thing um, about uh, the stored procedures. So you want to also be aware of the um, type of fields that, that are being pulled in. If they're um, integers, strings, um, characters, etc. So you want to be you want to be um, cognizant of that before before um, configuring it to your report. Yeah, that's a good point because uh, um, if you get the data data type wrong, um, it may lead to problems with report rendering um, and formats um, and filtering, uh, for that matter, um, in uh, uh, the rendering process. Now, um, unfortunately, we are at the end of uh, our um, time uh, with the uh, webinar, and there was one question left over here. Um, we will um, respond to that uh, offline after uh, the session. But uh, all the other questions I think uh, um, our panel has responded to. Um, if there are follow up questions, you can always reach out to us um, through Twitter, through um, the any of the email addresses or any of the contact channels like support and sales and stuff. Um, so thank you all for uh, attending today. And thank you, uh, Mateen, Evan, and Ethan for um, being part of the panel. Um, and uh, till, the time, till next time, we'll meet again on our next webinar. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank so you, guys. Have a good one.